Howdy folks, sorry I'd um, have a look at this article here from the Washington Post. For NASA contractors, lunar landing failures by Israel and India hit close to home. Of course they hit close to home, you don't really leave much further from home, do you? But oh well. For nine private companies under contract to get experiments to the moon, every miss is a reminder it's not a simple task. Gee, NASA back in the 60s, they really did mess people over by um, supposedly losing their data and all their technology from then to go to the moon with such ease on numerous occasions, apparently. Remember? Oh, well, so this is the reaction. Wow, we don't see that often. Normally we see them all cheering and clapping and going off like they've just won the lottery. But, yeah, oh, well, that would be different. It's a wonder you didn't make it, because everybody else has. Oh, well. The team was gathered in a conference room last week, about 35 in all. You need more than 35 people if you're going to go to the moon. You do realise that. Ready to celebrate India's triumph, the, <laughs> the country's first lunar landing. Like many watching the live stream broadcast from the control centre in Bangalore, half a world away, half a world away from where... <laughs> Uh, the chief executive, John Thornton of Astrobotic, a Pittsburgh company that is developing a moon lander of its own, was confident India would stick it. Wow, this is just retardedness, yeah? But there was a silence and long feces, I mean faces in India's mission control, not celebration, when they lost contact with the lunar craft, the you know, loony craft, you should call it. And there was silence too in Astrobotics conference room. Oh. As Thornton's team was reminded that the difficulties of orbital mechanics and the vacuum of space and the bullshit from 1969 from NASA aren't real. <laughs> oh, sorry, that wasn't written there. Everything has to be working just right. Yeah, you need <laughs> the right cameras. Uh, gee, you could sit here all night, couldn't you? Soon it will be their turn to attempt to land on the moon. Oh, here we go. Fuck, there'll be a queue. What happens to all this space junk anyway? You talk about you saving the planet. No, I'm sidetracking. But this is how crazy everything gets in the end. Uh, nine companies that NASA is betting on. It really, this is retarded in itself. Like, they can't even do it themselves anymore. They've got to... Uh, Tender it out to other people to go to the moon. This is, this is, ah. <laughs> Oh, wow. The list of companies, small startups like Thornton's Adventure that grew out of Carney. Look at all the money that's getting milked out here. So NASA intends to invest $2.6 over 10 years in relatively small contracts, some under 100. I might put, put one in, in. you know. Why, why not? For delivery services to the moon. Is this a Uber thing? Is that why India was going? Is that why? Oh, I don't know. I'm far out. That's a small fraction of the estimated $20 billion to $30 billion it would spend on its Artemis um, program designed to get humans to the moon service. Fuck, you won't be able to get there f fucking ever. Under CLPS... NASA isn't designing, building, or operating the landers that will make these lunar trips. Well, considering you guys are meant to be the people that did in the first place, this is this just shows how retarded people are to accept this as 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 their reality. Anyway, instead, NASA is simply hiring them to provide a FedEx-like service to a lifeless celestial body, twenty-four, uh, two hundred forty thousand miles away. Wow. They keep throwing shit in it's, um, that just contradicts themselves the whole time. The plans even include sending a rover to the lunar south pole. Wow. Yeah, cool. Who's going to prove that? An, a mission that could help NASA decide whether it's astro where its astronauts should land. Really? They don't know where they should land. They've been there before. Don't they? Shouldn't they just land where all the other shit is, maybe? I don't get this. Endeavour is risky. The effort, entrepreneurial, and the uh, and the failure is more than an is more than an option. NASA says, "Who's NASA anyway?" It's likely, yeah, and that's how just how NASA wants it as it tries to hit a cadence of two deliveries to the moon per year starting in twenty twenty one. No, wow, you haven't got one there yet. 
other than the bullshit ones you've pretended to take there. So how's this going to all end up, I wonder? NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein likens the program to a venture capital fund investing in a startup where you might as well invest in fireworks. That would be a better investment. At least you know they're going to blow up once you put them up into the sky. Um, yeah, and some of the companies NASA is looking to are unconventional. One, Firefly went bankrupt. <laughs> And you go bankrupt when you're getting the money to do it. I don't get it. When it lost a key investor, somebody worked out that it was bullshit. Another master and there's 12 employees. And how are they going to, how are 12 employees going to put all that aluminium foil and, and gold tinsel together? That'll be a project. Um, in their dusty barn in the Mojave, Mojave Desert. Wow. <laughs> The, the idea is that it is low investment, high risk, which means some will fail, will, all will fail. Bridenstine said in an interview, but if one is successful, the returns to NASA <laughs> and the returns to the United States of America will be significant. Wow. Yeah, because will that hide the fact that you faked it the first time? <laughs> Earlier this year, he told reporters, it's important we get back to the moon as fast as possible. We're going to take shots on goal. Wow, far out. So you didn't ever took shots back when you went, did you? You just went there. Maybe ask, um, what's his name, Buzz, if he's got any memories of how you all did it. He could help you out. Maybe he could be a consultant. But Astrobiotic plans its first moon mission in 2021. Yeah, everything's happening in 2021. That's the agenda. It would be the culmination of a long and unlikely odyssey. <laughs> this is space odyssey too, that is like, this is, ah! You can't write this shit. The company was co-founded in 2008 by Carnegie Mellon University press professor who recruited some of his current and former robotic students to join him in building a spacecraft. Oh my gosh, this is just retardedness. The company was able to drum up money from angel investors and, and the university, but it still went through nearly two deaths, Thornton said. Uh, he took over as chief executive and refocused on the company trying to develop and market a commercial delivery service to the moon. Wow, this is the problem with this whole thing is um, there's no science here, folks. There's no science given here at all. This is just all just like a, fan, a science fiction novel. The idea was to write it as fantasy. Oh, wow, it says what I just said. Uh, and as he was pitching astrobotic to investors at the at a conference, there was one guy laughing that entire time. That was probably me, yeah. And he wasn't laughing with me. Um, earlier this year, however, that must have been me there. NASA awarded it a $79.5 million contract. Where's my $79 million contract? That's why I was laughing. A big source of the revenue of revenue for the small company that gave it a douse or a douse of credibility it hadn't had before. See, give me the money. I'll pretend to go to the moon for you. Last month it it chose its ride to the moon, signing a deal. Why don't you ask Mister Squiggle? He'd know. He used to go there all the time. It's as bad as real as this. Um, yeah, signing a deal with the United Launch Alliance to launch its Peregrine Lunar Lander. Oh, here we go. That's an advancement on foil, at least. I'll give him that much. Um, which stands about six foot tall. Yeah, wow, well, that'll be a nice ride. An artist rendering. They don't even. They don't even have this thing. So it's all fantasy. The whole picture's fantasy. This moon picture's a fantasy. The Earth in the background's a fantasy. It's all a science fiction novel article. But getting to the moon is hard, as Israel learned in April when its bare sheet. Spacecraft crashed into the moon. Wow. Yeah, just making a mess now. It was a devastating outcome, but industry leaders and Prime Minister Shitanyahu, who was in the mission command centre, vowed to learn from it and push on. If at first you don't succeed, you try again. Oh, I'm not even going to go there. Then last week, India lost communication with its spacecraft as it descended towards the moon. See, this is why you were working with Telstra probably to get the communication there with your Indian employees, and this is what happens. I told you. It has since located a lander, but it's not established communication. It's just refusing to talk. 
He's, he's gone off with Cassini, apparently. He's going to go out into the universe and take photos of shit uh, that they don't, weren't planning for and send them back. But that's another story again. India is taking stock of its lunar ambitions. The lunar landers seem to be on the right trajectory, but then in the final moments appeared to fall straight down. Really? Well, how'd you know? It's all cartoons. Afterward, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, our determination to touch the moon has become even stronger, and he consoled a distraught K. Sivan, the head of the country's space agency, with an emotional embrace. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, we nearly... What? <laughs> NASA encouraged the Indian Space Agency, saying you've inspired us with your journey. And it vows that, look at this shit written in here. Like, really? You inspired us with your journey because you actually got closer than we did? Maybe, I don't know. It's weird. These were the first attempts by Israel and Indra India to land on the surface of the moon. So failure may have been expected, as it was the dawn of the space age when countries treated the moon like a dartboard, crashing space cuff into the lunar surface. Yeah, really. 266,000 miles away. Yeah, okay. In the 1960s, spacecraft like the Soviet Lunar and 2 and NASA's Ranger 7 ploughed into the lunar surface routinely as space agencies taught themselves how to hit it, another celestial body. So why are NASA not doing that themselves? Ridiculous. Failed moon missions might have been politically acceptable when the United States was racing to the Soviet Union. No, it's not acceptable now because it's 2019. You'd expect that in 1950s and 60s, wouldn't you? You couldn't fucking land shit anywhere. But, yeah, apparently. Failed moon missions might have been politically acceptable at yeah, Cold War Space Race today. However, there could be a backlash if NASA and its commercial partners can't successfully perform a feat that NASA first accomplished. Yeah, yes, true that. There may also be institutional resistance for adopting a Silicon Valley ethos, a fail fast, I iterate, try again to a 60-year-old federal bureaucracy overseen by the US Congress. This is, I can't read much more because it's just painfully bullshit, but I'm sure you can find the article. Um, it's, uh, it's just more bullshit, more bullshit, more bullshit. Enjoy your science, folks. So these clowns, they're talking about going to the moon and they're already getting other agencies to, to do it or, you know, to attempt to go to the moon. And then these people are talking about going to Mars and landing on Mars. These cunts couldn't land in your fucking backyard, let alone anywhere else. So just have a think again. <laughs> like, really? Success. You haven't had success. This is such a load of codswallop. Have a good day.